everyone. Um, I would like to focus on another uh, specific aspect of our field work, which is uh, commercial arrival brokering, or let's say the, commercial, the commodification of arrival infrastructure. Because um, it turned out during my research in Dortmund Nordstadt that commercial actors and their practices play a crucial role, both for newcomers as well as for other providers and planners. Okay, I start from the observation that arrival infrastructures are created through continuous and manifold infrastructuring practices by a range of actors in urban settings. Amongst them, we can find people who mediate between newcomers and other actors and resources. Those um, that are called by Heike and Suzanne, for example, arrival brokers, um, often act in informal contexts. Um, often also on a voluntary basis, and uh, they take on an instrumental role in newcomers' arrival and settlement. Um, often their infrastructuring practices are analyzed in the context of solidarity and reciprocity, which also reflects my experiences in Dortmund. But um, additionally, I observe that there are brokers who charge newcomers money for the infrastructuring practices they are offering. So they are working on a commercial basis. And when we look into the literature on commercial infrastructuring, we see that it's actually nothing new for migration studies. So there's a whole corpus of literature on uh, what's called migration industries. And the, in, the embeddedness of this industry and the interrelatedness with other fears, more formal, uh, even constitute the foundation of the concept of this migration in infrastructure. And migration brokers uh, in the, as part of this industry, such as labor recruitment agents or also smugglers, they take a crucial but um, also ambivalent role. So many studies show that they offer migrants uh, shoots and letters. They create opportunities, but also threats. Still, a uh, little research has focused on commercial brokering in arrival contexts and its effects for newcomers' trajectories. A study of Hilal Alkan shows that brokers are not only middle persons for a spatial mobility, but also for social mobility in an arrival context. Um, so, especially in the field of housing and employment, commercial brokerage plays an important role for migrants. It develops against the background of provision gaps and lack of alternative contacts to mediate, so to access resources. Alkan's research uh, specifically focuses on the role of SIMSARS, uh, which is how brokers uh, of many types are called in Arabic. And SIMSARS are also central figures in my research, but commercial brokering occurs beyond Arabic-speaking linguistic communities. That's why I propose to use the term commercial rival brokers. Besides, commercial brokering encompasses more than housing or employment brokerage, but uh, stretches over a whole variety of arrival relevant support practices. So I would argue that we can speak of an arrival industry that develops around provision gaps and barriers that newcomers face upon arrival, but we can also discuss this later on. The presentation will not primarily focus on the commodification debates on the question whether commodification is good or bad, legitimate or illegitimate. We see that it is happening and by framing uh, commercialized processes as commodification, I see it in a relationship to gaps and barriers within welfare and migration regimes. Instead, I would like to explore uh, for today's presentation how arrival infrastructure is commodified and how it is impacting newcomers' trajectories. Methodologically, this research developed um, inductively. So commercial infrastructure turned out to be a relevant and structuring practice. I conducted interviews with newcomers, including people who paid for arrival support. These are both men and women who migrated, uh, for example, from Spain, many with Moroccan, but also with other backgrounds such as Gambia, but also from other countries such as Romania and Syria. I also talked to brokers, including commercial brokers. We had interviews with providers and municipality representatives to understand commercial brokerage and its larger context. Besides, I was doing a participant observation 
and several arrival spaces among which a shop where uh, support is offered against, against payment. Uh, commercial arrival uh, brokers in Dortmund offer a wide range of support. Their services reach from the facilitation of migration to arrival support. This encompasses steps that are crucial for the initial arrival, such as finding an apartment, doing the registration, finding a job, accessing social benefits, but also it includes needed and often scarce services for an ongoing arrival, mostly related to bureaucracy. So commercial arrival brokers, they support with paperwork and translations and accompany people to appointments. Their services range from ad hoc to support uh, to all round packages that can be booked even before departure, for example, from Spain, and that include a whole bunch of services. Some uh, actors charge small amounts of money, others take very high sums, and the quality ranges also from certain professionalism to very bad quality. Some of the actors operate informally, offering their services in public squares or cafes, others via online platforms, and still others have a formal business and even rent office spaces, as you can see in this picture here on the right side. Commercial brokerage increased in the context of uh, EU immigration following the EU expansions and the effects of 2008's economic crisis. It also gained importance against the background of COVID-19 lockdowns where especially state services were inaccessible. We witness a moral delegitimation of the commodification of arrival support by many formal actors. They criticize that uh, access to state services that are actually for free is subject to charge by private actors. Besides the fact that the most vulnerable people have to pay and often land in bad housing conditions is seen as exploitation. On the other hand, commercial actors are legitimized by formal actors because they simply cooperate with them um, because they need intermediaries who translate, who support clients with filling out documents, giving advice, etc. Still, uh, we also see that many providers in the municipality follow um, something we call a prevention approach. Um, so they try to reach newcomers as early as possible and direct them to formalized and commercial support offers because actually, especially in the neighborhood we are researching on, there is a dense network of formal support organizations. I would now uh, like to focus on the ambivalent role commercial brokers take in newcomers' arrival trajectory. When researching on commodified infrastructuring, I found it quite difficult, and probably I find it so difficult to grasp the role newcomers attribute to commercial brokers, such as the sensors. Uh, the argument is not yet very developed, but I see the relation between newcomers and commercial brokers uh, in between reliance and unreliability. The interview with uh, Rashida, uh, that was translated and commented by Latifa, where you can read uh, a quote here, is very expressive in this regard. They are comparing themselves with doctors, where many people are waiting to get treated, but who don't cure their patients. Taking a doctor, even a private doctor, as a metaphor shows something about the relevance people attribute to brokers and the need to rely on them. But besides the quote expresses some kind of trust and popularity. People rely, they trust in brokers. Some people I've met use commercial and uncommercial support parallelly or even go back to a commercial broker after having been with an NGO uh, for a while. But still the fact that they stay without health so that people are not cured and helped by commercial brokers expresses an unreliability. So I would now like to develop two arguments uh, that may help to better understand how commodified arrival infrastructure is able to fill gaps that newcomers face and how it structures their arrival. Arrival infrastructure is um, conceived and partly perceived as a service, I would say. Um, you, have, you only have to pay money, then you can find everything, says Malika. And, I think she describes commercial arrival infrastructure pretty much as a service, not as a favor or an act of charity. And I could observe, observe this during many interviews. So people attribute 
to board services another meaning, another matter of course. I would argue it expresses a certain increased agency people have in accessing resources, even if they are discriminated against and have little social capital. This is also amplified by the spatial context. So the sketch shows a shop where people walk in as customers to get help. To understand commercial brokers' practices as services also points to their flexible adaptation towards specific newcomer groups. As such, they are especially accessible, available, and oriented towards their customers' needs. What I would like to explore now more deeply. So often, but not always, um, commercial brokers commodify their own arrival experiences and their in-group membership, which is mostly related to linguistic or religious groups. As such, they receive a leap of faith and compared to many other support services, they can easily communicate with their clients. Commercial brokers are thus very accessible. This is amplified through their location. As I said, they are often in public or semi-public spaces such as cafes and some brokers also own their own localities. And all of them are located mostly in areas where newcomers live or spend time. In order to become even more accessible and trustworthy, brokers also uh, have ad, uh, make advertisements on social media or even pay other customers if they recommend their services to new clients. So accessibility and trust are not something that commercial brokers per se, per se but that they also actively uh, create in order to get new, new, uh, new customers. Uh, the availability of commercial brokers um, is also adapted to their customers' needs. As such, they often can be reached via messengers and way beyond standard office hours. They offer to accompany people, uh, which is a practice that other services can rarely manage to do. But we also have to see that despite their um, availability, there is no security that people can really reach them. So many people told me stories about having a meeting with a broker who then didn't show up. And lastly, I would argue that brokers very well know and also channel their customers' needs and aspirations. Um, here's a price list of services. Um, one, for example, is uh, making an appointment at the, specifically at the foreigner's office through their online registration tool. And uh, additionally, they are able to navigate the system and very importantly, to connect different fields. So for example, example, in the context of migration from Spain, uh, they are able to uh, broker an apartment then do the registration at the municipality, register kids, find an employment, and then apply for social benefits. So they know the order and if newcomers are able to pay, um, we'll talk about the traps in the next slides, they are quite, they can quite easily actually uh, reach a certain state of stability. Because yeah, brokers they connect different fields and navigate well through the system. <clears throat> but I would argue, um, commercial bro arrival brokering is also especially unreliable because it follows a commercial logic. Um, one of the commercial brokers I talked to gave me this uh, business card that you can see, and I found it um, yeah very surprising or astonishingly astonishing. Um, so brokers, um, I don't want to say that they don't want to help. I think this would be part of another paper to talk more about their motivations, but still through the eyes of newcomers. And if we look at the practices, um, profit comes over help. So an, an orientation towards profit and the inclusion of money shapes newcomers arrival processes. Um, I see that I see it shaping in three ways. So firstly, regarding the quality, um, brokers, they follow standard solutions and channel people into specific housing, jobs, or schools, depending on their network and embeddedness. This may not and often does not fit to people's expectations, especially when it comes to housing and jobs, the quality is rather bad and often entail new problems, including health issues. Besides, a service is uh, ticked off even if the goal is not reached yet. For example, uh, a broker tried to register children in a kindergarten 
um, and his service ends after he has tried at three kindergartens, even if there's still no place found. So there's no guarantee or reliance on health or on the quality of health. The commodification of arrival support also affects its duration. More steps mean more money, and so newcomers face delays and have to wait, which can create existential problems. Um, paying more money may reduce waiting times, but this leads to a third element, which is the monetary accessibility. Uh, I could observe how arbitrary prices or prices that don't fit newcomers' resources result in conflicts and eventually end the trade relationship. And unsurprisingly, money and the price excludes many people. <laughs> Even if uh, commercial brokers also in this regard perfectly adopt to their customers and propose, uh, for example, installment payments once their customers receive welfare benefits. Uh, but of course, um, newcomers, they are not only customers relying on one broker. Instead, they navigate, recall, and co-construct their arrival infrastructure. Um, often after, after an initial phase of arrival, many look for and find uncommercial uh, alternatives, especially after some ruptures or disappointments with the commercial broker. But of course, we also see that in some fields, such as, for example, housing, there are almost no alternatives. So people are stuck and rely on commercial arrival infrastructure to move on. I would now like to come to some conclusions. We will also have time to discuss them later on. So arrival industries develop against the background of newcomers restricted or difficult access to resources within migration welfare regimes. As a reaction to that, commercial arrival brokers offer a wide variety of uh, commodified arrival related support. Um, they take an ambivalent role. Newcomers rely and rely on commodified arrival infrastructure that is itself often unreliable. And we can understand this by analyzing um, commodified arrival infrastructure as a service that is oriented towards uh, specific newcomers as customers. But due to its profit orientation, it does not offer reliable help, but may shape newcomers' access to resources in terms of quality, duration, and monetary accessibility. Just as a short outlook, we would in this breakout group, of course, talk about commercial actors or commodified arrival infrastructure. And I'm interested in your experiences, also how you see the relation between the commercial actors and more formal, informal and commercial actors. Maybe also what we can learn or possible implications for policy. And uh, lastly, it's also about concepts. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm.